Hello everyone, welcome to Fundi Talks Education, your podcast for student champions. My name is Piwe Masuku. Today we are joined in studio by Dr. Malebo. Dr. Malebo has experience in dealing with mental health with students and families. And today, she's joining us to diagnose challenges that students face with mental health and their studies. Welcome, Dr. Malebo. Please, can you introduce yourself? Thank you. So my name is Dr. Malebo Mokotedi Mapiloko. I'm a medical practitioner. I have founded a medical center. It's a multidisciplinary medical center in Danefern called Medewell Danefern Medical Center. Thank you, Dr. Malebo, for joining us. And we're just going to reflect. Recently, there's a study that was conducted that shows that over 30% of students are actually start struggling with their mental health. What do you have to say about these stats and how true are they? Yes, so um, they are quite alarming, P. But when um, another study, uh, it was a UNESCO study, really went in depth with uh, our students, they found that actually up to 73% of students felt that they were not okay mentally. So less than half of them, and I'm sure that's that 30%, are the ones that are actually going to seek mental health care services. Oh my goodness, this is actually very alarming, like you say, to say that 70% is a lot compared to people that are away. So a lot of us think that you know, mental health is a, is a sickness or it's a disorder or something of color. You know, when we grow up, we, we're never exposed to what mental health is, what happens when you said and something like that. And how true is this? And how do you find it now in your practice with students coming in? Are they more aware and are they taking it serious or it's still the same? Yeah, so there has been stigma around certain demographics uh, who the people perceive that they have more mental health challenges. But actually mental health challenges can affect everybody from a hundred year old to a five year old. Um, whatever your cultural group is, whatever your financial status is, and in this case, it definitely can affect students as well. So no one is necessarily immune from mental health challenges. So this is something that we experience on a daily basis and probably most of us are not aware of. And mostly students with the anxiety during the exams. What, what are some of the tests that you guys use in your practice to actually detect or to at least bring this thing to the attention of the student to be aware that actually something is happening mentally and they have to deal with it so that they are stable for their exercise and exams? Okay, so when I have um, parents coming in, usually typically it's parents bringing their, stu their children in, being a bit worried about them. There are two tests that I, I, I do, um, and these are, are big words, but um, you know, for the students listening, you can, you can go on to Google. Uh, yeah, Google doctor. Um, and, <laughs> and then, so there's the PHQ-9, which is a test for depression, and there's a GAD7, GAD7, which is a test for anxiety symptoms. And this is accessible for anyone with a smartphone, right? Because it's on Google. Yes, definitely. It's accessible all through. Fantastic. Now, for someone who doesn't even know where to look or not even thinking about Google, what are some of the basic symptoms I can pick up from myself on a daily basis? Okay, so I will refer back to the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7, right? So these tests were actually formulated by psychiatrists. So they are clinical tests that are very fine, very scientific tests, which look at if you have, you know, uh, three or more of the features, then it's telling you that you might have an anxiety or a depression issue. So I will give you an example for in the GAD test, they will ask you something like, how often do you find that you worried and you can't contain that worry? You know, Every day. <laughs> <laughs> you see, yes. and especially SP when you can't con control it. For example, if I've parked my car and I think to myself, have I, have I locked the car? 
have I not? And, and even as we're speaking, it's a, it's a thought that's coming in my head. That's a problem. Um, somatic symptoms. So that's just a big word to say physical symptoms. So if you are getting, feeling like you, your heart is racing all the time, you are tremoring, uh, you have stomach aches, you're not sleeping, you're eating too much, too little, sleeping too much, too little, then those are the kind of tests that are contained, the questions that are contained in the tests that will tell you that you need to see us. I can almost see myself in those symptoms and most of them when I was still a student and I was going through my exams. Now is a critical time, matriculants are writing in different tertiary institutions, students are writing and they're actually going through or experiencing most of those symptoms. How do you control it? Okay, so that's a very good question. First of all, I would like to say, and I tell parents all the time and students that don't wait until the exams okay. or big tests to seek help. So in the beginning of the year, as the year is progressing, if you are having those symptoms, then you need to go and see a mental health professional. And we really um, will sit down and assess you. And after assessing you, we'll give you a plan. So, um, you know, usually I'll say it's, I take a biopsychosocial plan okay. to look at how to best manage you with a fit that works for you. Okay. Yeah. Phew, doctor, this is a lot to take in. For a moment, I'm thinking you're diagnosing me as I'm <laughs> sitting here with you. But the most important thing is at home. How do I prevent it or how do I manage it when I'm now feeling that all these symptoms that you've described, I'm starting to feel them, to have them, and I'm conscious of them. How do I prevent this? How do I manage it at all? Um, thank you, Spi. I love the fact that you mentioned to prevent it because mental wellness is not just going to the doctor when you're not feeling okay, but actually making sure that you maintain your mental health. So when I see my patients, especially my young patients, I like to simplify it, right? So I say, let's take a bio psychosocial approach. Yes. So let's start with the bio. You need to make sure physically that you are sleeping well. Young people don't sleep well. We know whether you're out partying or you're scrolling through the night in your social media feed and yes, yes. studying as well throughout the night. Yes. That is detrimental. Lack of sleep is detrimental to your mental health. The other thing is exercise. You know, exercise is almost a blanket approach as doctors for everything, right? So for your heart, for your lungs, for diabetes prevention, but also for mental health, you really produce um, endorphins that are feel-good hormones. Right? So that's the biological side. Yes. The psychological side is literally making sure that you deal with the challenges that you face, particularly from home. So, um, and this is where I think it's so important to look at the importance of therapists. These are psychologists who can tell you and show you how to develop coping mechanisms in times of stress, how to sort of reconfigure your thinking processes, how to become optimistic, how to fail well, you know. Yes. You know, most students, if you don't, I remember as a student when I started um, medical school and my physics exam went so badly. I'd never failed anything in my life. I can relate. <laughs> and you know, I went through such a slippery slope. I didn't know how to fail well. I didn't yes. know that you can pivot. I needed to just go back and relook at how I study, look at my study patterns, look at time management. So all those psychological things. And you know, I tell young people that you also need to be able to say no and put yes. limits. Yes. Even with families. So you have young people who are studying at home and still have a lot of chores to do. And it's busy. It's busy. So how to put that uh, those barriers and those boundaries. And then the social aspect. And this is very important. You must be, surround yourself as a student with people that you can turn to when you're going through a tough time. Okay. Now, this is very difficult, and you also, I'm sure, see it on social media. Everyone is singing the song Kuningi. This means that we are aware that we are actually juggling a lot. But how do you cut down? We are, try we are all trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Students are going from I'm studying to, you know, a side hustle.
whether you know you are a bartender at a restaurant whether you do something on the side yeah. financially to be stable but on the other side your mental that lack of sleep it's not because i don't want to sleep but it's because i'm looking at something else on the side that i need so much to get somewhere how do you balance is there such a thing so you know what you are just asked ne? is there such a thing personally i think there isn't such a thing yes. if you are trying to balance too many balls some of them are going to fall yes. we say it's drop drop the ball drop, yes. so what what we usually do even in leadership summits and seminars where we're talking to executives mm. we tell them about prioritizing yes not balancing but prioritizing so this means that you need to tell yourself i've only got 24 hours in a day and in those 24 hours i've got about 16 hours where i can be effective I need to number the things that from 1 to 10 yes. that are most important. Yes. So if you are a student, in this season, your most important thing is to study. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's the social aspect, you know, your friends, your... Mm -hmm. the, but in the season, it's to study, it's to make sure you attend lectures, it's to exercise, it's to eat well. I mean, I had to prioritize exercise. We were talking before we yes. came in that, you know, these are body goals. Yes, yes. And before, I, I was prioritizing other things, you yes. know. So now, first thing in the morning, I go and go to gym, exercise, make sure that I pro prioritize my water. Then I prioritize, you know, my family, my kids, hubby. As a student, it's prioritizing your wellness, eating well, exercising. So but for us let us make it minimalistic so someone is now thinking i have to exercise and someone is thinking you know what i think medication is something i need and that will help me even though the stigmas and stereotypes around you know young people taking medication and all that you know without us understanding the problems the challenges we we label whatever it is you know you name it so what are some of these medications that are taken by students or your patients at an early stage? And how does it work? Um, do you still need to go back and exercise? Or you can just continue with the meds without exercise? Yeah, she's, I'm, I'm loving all the questions that you're asking. I feel like the students are getting a free consult. <laughs> but um, the... The, the, the importance, the, the role of medication. Yes. Number one, I want to destigmatize yes. taking medication, psychiatric medication. Yes. Often we, I give it to my patients for a season. Mm -hmm. Not all patients will need yes. medication. 100%. Remember we talked about biopsychosocial. Yes. So you need to be exercising. You need to be, you know, watching what you watch, what you expose yourself yes. to. Um, time management, but there are those patients P, who are so far down. So a student who is literally unable to get out of bed, yes. crying all the time, unable to attend lectures. Is that now chronic? Yeah, chronic and severe. Yes. Okay, unable to focus on, you know, reading when they, they give them a whole paragraph to read. It's either they just read the first word and then they... It's blank. It's blank. They can't continue. Yes. So those are the kind of patients where medication may play a role. And how the medication works is um, to summarize a three-year study into one, one minute, yes. is that you've got certain neurotransmitters in your brain, mm -hmm. all right? Serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline. These neurotransmitters are feel-good yes. hormones. So they help you to be able to think better, feel better, um, they control impulsivity and what we do is for a season if you are very severely depressed or uh, severely anxious and it's incapacitating yes. meaning that you can't work you can't function you can't function yes. then we give you this these medications for example an antidepressant that's often used is a, a serotonin the uptake inhibitor yes. to increase this hormone in the brain to balance to balance and once it's balanced in the brain for a while, mm -hmm. that will also allow you to be able to see, seek therapy, which yes. is very important, mm -hmm. so that you are able to assimilate everything that the therapist is teaching you, right? Once that's done, I usually say, 
let's take a journey for about six months to a year. Yes. Once you are that's done, provided you are in a better mental state, you're doing better at school, interrelationally, you're doing well, yes. then I start titrating the medication. And mm. generally, provided you're doing all the biopsychosocial things, you won't revert back into needing yes. the medication. Doctor, you are pressing on very important issues. Mental health is a process. It's not just a one-time thing. It's not something that you wake up one day and, you know, you survive. It's all good. You have to take yourself through the journey. Now, what are the types of mental health issues that are actually out there, you know, for us to be aware? When someone's saying, I'm anxious, I've got so much anxiety. When someone's saying, I've got so much fear. You know, there's people that have phobias also. Are those part of or we are just making this thing up? Yes. So there's a variety of uh, mental health uh, challenges. Yes. The most common, as I've alluded to, is depression. Yes. Right? So depression and there's anxiety. Yes. Depression for me, I would say, I think of it like a pancake. Yes. You are flat. Yes. Right? It's that person, that friend where you're like, show me, let's go to the library and study. No, so I, don't feel like I don't feel like it. Let's go out and tell me, I don't feel like it. You sit with them, all they can tell you is how terrible uh, life is going. They can't see light at the end of the tunnel yes. at all. That's okay. depression. That's depression. Those are the dangerous students because those are the students that actually won't go to class, yes. you know, or won't study or won't focus in an exam. And then you get anxiety, which is almost the other the other sort of option where yes. I think of it as a popcorn uh, a content. Attack. Yes, everything <laughs> is, you know, you are like, okay, Chomi, let's go study, let's walk to the library. No, but what if we get attacked while yes. we're there? What if, you know, my heart is beating fast, I might be dying. So those are the very extremely worried, worried patients. And also, that also still can affect your studies because when you are trying to focus you need to almost be in a calm place and not thinking about sure what's happening at home yes. my mother is sick my father's left us who's okay. going to pay my school fees you know so that that's also detrimental yes. but we have other things for example post-traumatic stress disorder yes. it's a type of anxiety disorder we know that in south africa there's a lot of social ills that yes. our students are facing Definitely gender-based violence girls are being attacked there's violence there's crime there's a lot of poverty our students come from places where they see a lot of trauma chronic trauma yes. you know at home and that can cause someone to have ptsd where they're hyper vigilant yes. so they're always you know on the lookout for something on the lookout for something and then you get your more severe sort of a mental health challenges this is bipolar where the patients then are very very happy they want to spend everything they <laughs> spend money they you know one of the things is people I who blew it. I, <laughs> born, I blew it eh? yes. <laughs> so you have that and then they go through processes where they yes, very depressed indeed. deep and the, with the depression it's so deep where you find them sometimes cutting themselves mm. sometimes um suicidality yes you know in this season we That's have definitely the last level of it last level yes so you have that and then there's something called attention deficit disorder adhd yes. a lot of students come to me and say yo doc i'm adhd i need pills i'm like no 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 it's not God. it's not that yes most of the time you find that someone isn't focusing because it's a focus yes. issue isn't focusing because they've got anxiety mm. or because they have depression yes. but usually with adhd it's diagnosed earlier on yes. you know if you have those kids ne, don't give them sweets don't give them normally sweets. say that yeah it's those kids who come in and then they you know they take this book out they pull out your the kids that can't yes. yes so that is actually a, a also a type of mental health mm. challenge that we, we, we see a lot in, in our students, but those are usually students who've had it for a while. So, yeah. This conversation is very interesting and it's triggering a lot of memories for myself and I'm sure for the viewers also at home. Mm. Now, if, if, if this student is now in a stage where I can't assist because I might feel like I'm being drained emotionally by them, 
where where do i refer them for help well, what, what channels are there freely and also, you know, where you can go and pay for a consultation for them to actually seek help and get help? Okay. So I think that the first uh, two things that you have to look at when you are supporting a friend. Mm -hmm. Number one, if your friend is suicidal. Yes. So if they mention, you know, and, and usually people who've committed suicide will say, or people, the friends of people who've committed suicide, they'll say, this person was talking, Horish, I'd rather be dead, maybe yes. my life would be... The lines are there. The lines are there. They give you those signals. Then you make sure that you take them to a healthcare professional, either a medical doctor, a GP like myself, because mm -hmm. generally we are quite accessible in terms of no waiting period. You can literally yes. walk in, mm -hmm. or a psychologist or psychotherapist. So on yes. campus, Generally, there should be something, um, you know, a counseling service. Yes. If there isn't, there's the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, which is a free counseling service that you can help your friend reach into. Okay. Um, what's exciting now is, a, so I've teamed up with a, a company called a Abovex, which is joining up with Fundi called, and creating a Fundi health platform which is, I know you young people, you're all digitized, yes. right? <laughs> you know, so you've yeah. got a counselor at your disposal. So yeah. you literally want to create an atmosphere where I can say, show me, I can see you're not okay. Let's whip out our cell phone. Let's mm -hmm. click here. Let's see if we can connect with somebody who can talk me through and help me to diagnose and manage this problem. And um, so they, there's a lot of resources available, yes. both paid and and free yeah dr malewo thank you so much i can't thank you enough even the student at home they are feeling that this consultation was very informative the parents as well um thank you so much everyone who's listening today we brought to you dr malewo to talk to us about uh, mental wellness as well as how does it affect the student journey and we are happy that we've got you know some insights some of the tools that we can access on google since we are socially out there and we are always on the platforms looking for information so feel free to tap into the resources that are provided the sa depression group if you have a psychiatrist at your disposal please please feel free to talk to them about your mental health what we've learned today is that your mental is a journey you can never ever go on a one day adventure to be mentally healthy but also at some of the choices. Don't wait until the last time. It's also some of the things that you expose yourself into. And again, be aware of your surrounding. Be aware of the little things that add up to how you feel, what you do each and every day. Thank you so much. Until next time. Thank you. My advice is what I would have told myself as a 19-year-old first-year student, and that is, biopsychosocial. Make sure that I am sleeping well. Make sure that I'm eating well. Students, make sure that you exercise. You prioritize making sure that you are healthy and well. Try and avoid alcohol, please. Alcohol is a neurotransmitter depressant. It contributes to depression and at the end of the day, anxiety. Psychological, make sure that you prioritize your mental health what you expose yourself to, coping mechanisms, resilience. If you do need to reach out to a therapist, do so. It's not a mark of weakness, guys. And understand that it's okay not to do well the first time. Fail forward. Social. Make sure that you make an attempt to have a social network, friends around you who really support you, who have your back, who encourage you. And most of all, be that friend who's there for others. It really helps with your mental health. And if there are people who you can talk to about certain challenges, please don't keep it in. Reach out. Your mental health is a priority for all of us. This is a consultation just for you because I want to see you at the end of the year having done well and having been mentally healthy and mentally wealthy. Thank you.